Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Borderlands 2's options menu. You really? Really? You thought that I could get a Borderlands 2 video done this quickly? Are you crazy? <laughs> no. Didn't get review code, so I've only just got this. But I would like to explore. I'm going to explore the possibility that they might not have actually screwed it up this time. A little while ago, there was a love letter, that, love letter I suppose, to PC users. Came from Claptrap, i.e. written by Gearbox's PR department, that said, Hey guys, we're really, really sorry for the PC version of Borderlands, because it was bloody awful. And it was. Good lord, it was. We're talking about a PC version that had horribly fixed FOV to the point where you had to bind it to a movement key in order to get it to work, and even then, it caused all manner of crazy issues. We're talking about a game that couldn't fit the number of stats in the menu for the actual weapon itself. It wasn't designed to fit that many words into the box. Good lord. Not to mention the other ridiculous problems associated with multiplayer matchmaking through GameSpy. However, all is not lost, dear viewers, because Borderlands 2 was supposed to be better. Is it? Let's have a look. Here we go. This is what they've given you this time. The first and possibly most important thing, I think, in this is the field of view slider. We're looking at 110 as maximum and 70 as minimum. This is very, very nice indeed. 90 is what I would consider to be industry standard for PC. I believe that it is the resolution that most PC-centric FPS to shoot for as a baseline, and that's a good baseline. It's pretty solid. I have no problems with that. I can go as low as 80 and not feel too uncomfortable. Anything lower than that, and it starts to get a little bit nasty. Goes all the way to 110. It's a good number, honestly. Maybe a little bit more would have been great, but I mean, at 110, you're going to start to get fish eye. I actually used to play Bad Company 2 at 120, and that was pretty badly fish eyed at the side of the screen, but I was also using a 30 inch monitor, so it kind of was not so bad, really. I mean, you're always going to get fish eye on field of view when you stretch it that much. That's the point. I mean, you have fish eye at the sides of your vision as well. You don't notice it, your eye perceives it, and your brain interprets it in a different way. But you do have fisheye at the side of it. it that's, there is that curve and there is that distortion there. So I'll probably end up playing it at 110. I don't see any reason why not. I think that sounds like a, a good one to me. Resolution-wise, you've got your full gamut of resolutions, all the way down to 640 by 480, which is very surprising indeed. This may give the game a reasonable amount of scalability on lower-end systems, which is nice to see. Although, I would be surprised to see anyone using a 4x3 monitor, 640 by 480 to actually play this game, you never know. Rescalable HUD, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes, this is a very, very nice one indeed. HUD is often far too large in PC ports, because, of course, the HUD was designed for consoles in mind. What that means is, they make the HUD bigger, so you can actually read it on a television that's half the room away. Not so important here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock the HUD down to minimum size for the moment. These are the bounds, as you can see, and then you can actually also do the scale, which is particularly awesome. So, if I want my HUD to be here, if I don't want it to be at the extremities of the screen, which is very useful if you have a larger monitor, then I can bound it in here. Or if I would prefer to have it at the edge of the screen. That shouldn't be too much of a problem at all. I can even actually push it past the edge if I happen to scale it in a certain way, which is in itself pretty damn cool. So I'm going to scale the HUD down to its minimum size. And, yeah, that looks good. That's a good place to put it. UI Sway, also available here. So the in-game menu can actually move backwards and forwards. You can turn that off if you don't like it. Windowed mode is available. Always nice. And VSync as well. This is particularly cool. You can actually cap your frame rate, and the reason you would do that, of course, is for performance issues that you might be suffering due to your system specs. So you can actually have a smoothed out frame rate, which is anywhere kind of between this value. You can cap it at 30, which actually, it actually did that instantly, by the way. As soon as I clicked that, fraps went down to 30 frames per second. You can then cap it at 50, which is a kind of a weird amount, and then 60, 72, 120, and unlimited. That's a good number of options. This in particular supports 120 hertz displays, which is very, very good for PC users indeed. Let's continue to go down here. Antitropic filtering up to 16 times. It's very, very impressive indeed. That's a good number. Indeed, this is what it defaulted to after detecting my system settings. So that's always good news. Bullet decals. 
off, normal, and high are your options here. Foliage distance, so this is a good one for getting a little bit more performance on something that doesn't necessarily matter as much. Texture quality, low, medium, and high. Available game detail, low, medium, and high as well. Texture quality, of course, is something that you really want to be looking into. I think that's one of the most important things when it comes to graphical fidelity these days. Ambient occlusion, yeah, that's a, that's a nasty one. Often, even with higher-end systems, you can take a big hit from ambient occlusion. It seems to believe that we can manage it, so we'll keep it on. And depth of field, folks. Yes, depth of field. It's a, it's just a blur effect when things are far away, and it's really quite nice. FXAA, that's a fairly advanced version of anti-aliasing. It is nice. And, of course, you've got then view distance up to ultra high, which is what it detected on the 680. And then you can play around the physics effects as well. Generally speaking, I believe they recommend if you want to go really high on this, you either have a, a dual GPU card, like a 690, or you have SLI, and then you dedicate one of your cards to physics processing otherwise it's gonna cause something of a performance hit so overall graphical options are very very nice indeed all right let's jump on back shall we and have a look at a few other things always good to look at audio actually and surprising amount of stuff here you can mute the audio when the game is minimized or not if you so desire which is actually more useful than you might think Sometimes you might want to minimize it while you're waiting for something, but you want to hear if something's coming along, and you maybe want to be notified if there's something in game, like say a trade window opened or whatever, so that's kind of nice for that. Voice over IP chat levels available here as well as push to talk, very useful indeed, and you can turn off your player callouts if you don't like them. So if you are kind of sick of that, you can turn it off. Subtitles on by default as always, and individually manipulatable, which is probably not a really good word, but we're going to use it anyway because it sounds complicated. Levels for music, sound effects, and dialogue, always good. Big fan of that. Gameplay options, lots of stuff. You can actually turn the training messages off by default, which is really nice indeed. Weapon aim toggle as well. Do you want to hold the button down or would you prefer just to toggle it with a right mouse button click? You can do that. Turn off dual requests if you so desire. Fixed minimap rotation, on or off. Item rotation locked camera and various other things including the ability to censor gore death and dismemberment if you like which of course doesn't sound like any fun at all all right keyboard and mouse i would i would like to point out that mouse smoothing was by default off this shows a great deal of understanding from the gearbox guys because mouse smoothing is quite frankly terrible and it's very unlikely that you actually want it on full mouse sensitivity bar here which goes it, it goes it's a weird one this one isn't it because it goes from essentially one to ten and then in increments of five so you've got about 20 or so different settings that you can actually have here I uh, just leave it on by default. I mean, more often than not, I actually manipulate my mouse sensitivity with my mouse. I use a, a G9X, which has various presets available on the hardware itself. So it's not really all that relevant to me. Invert mouse look, always nice to have. And if you want to turn on aim assist, you can do that. And that would make you a weak and horrible person. Key bindings, folks. Here we go. Can you rebind? Yes, you can. You can rebind pretty much everything, as far as I can tell. Having not played the game yet, it's rather difficult to know if there are any other hidden keys, but it doesn't seem like there are. And you can reset the key bindings right there. So, a love letter to PC gamers? No question about that, folks. There is no real doubt about that. We're talking about Steam and Steam matchmaking, which is much, much better than GameSpy for all my issues with Steam. This is certainly not one of them. You can invite friends in here from the menu to begin with, as well as toggle network options. It has a LAN mode. Very cool, guys. Very cool. As well as a variety of online options, as well as the obvious offline single player. DLC is already lit up. That somewhat concerns me, but of course, as far as I'm aware, there is no DLC available for this game at the moment, aside from the couple of pre-order guns, which you'll probably replace in about five minutes anyway. Overall, PC options menu is awesome, good god. Wow, I, I haven't seen an options menu like that for a very, very long time in a AAA release, so this is very impressive work, so GG to the Gearbox guys for this. Looking forward to playing this game, and of course, I'll be bringing you a video once... I have had the chance to get my teeth into it and form a cogent opinion. My name's been Total Biscuit. The options menu gets its, in, gets its own video because, well, why not? It is that advanced and crazy. And that means I won't have to bore you with it in the real WTF is when it actually comes along. I'll see you next time.